and hello everyone welcome back to another NIM tutorial in this tutorial we'll be taking a look at working with the terminal in NIM NIM provides a lot of ways in which you can communicate with the terminal in it so this is the terminal for those of you who don't know in VS Code you can go terminal new terminal again here's the terminal so it allows you to interact with it and make it look good or change a couple things of it without needing to install a third party library to get it to do things. Like in Python, you need to install colors or something like that to really get things out of the terminal that you want it to do. So let's import std slash terminal. This will import the terminal library for us. And let's say std out. So we can't just say echo in this case. We need to say standard output. So the std out is for standard output dot style right line fg red. So this is a foreground color red. And we can put a little bit of text here. So this is red text. Now if we were to run this, and it should be styled, right lines, not style, right line. This is red text, and I can see the text itself is red. We can, of course, make cooler things. So here we can also go BG blue, and this will make the background color blue. So if we run this, we'll get red text in a blue background. Well, maybe not the base for the blue terminal, but it's, it's good. You can also specify specific styles that you'd have such as style bright this will be bold text you have style blink this will be blinking text and then style underscore and this will be underscore text so if we run that so you can see this is pretty cool the text is blinking i actually like that a lot but in here you have red tick or uh, bold and here you have underlined text but note this only really affects this one line of text. So if I go echo test, you'll notice test does not really get affected by it. It's just normal. So this will only affect one line of text. If you want to affect everything, then instead of saying styled right line, you could go set and then what you want to set. So background color. And now I can set it to, and let's go here, BG red and true. And why is my caps lock on? True. And this will say, okay, make the background color red. In our case, true would mean, should it be bright or dark? So we can actually have a couple more here. Let's copy this. Let's go false. And then we can actually see how it differs. So here you'll see there's a light red and here's a dark red and all of the echoes are being affected by it. You can also change the foreground if you want. So let's go set foreground color. And it should of course be FG and not BG. If we run that, in this case, or background color is still being applied, but now I can also set the foreground color. Let's maybe instead of going red, we go fg blue or yeah blue would work if you run that then there we go you can also set a specific style that should persist for the rest of the program so std out dot set style style reverse and this means basically it should reverse the style so a blue background and a red foreground now so this here would be reversed. So if we go and let's just maybe add a test here. Boom. And I forgot to close that. There we go. If we run this, then as you can see, it has been reversed. So now it has a blue background with red text instead. And to of course reset all of this, so it doesn't do that anymore. You can just say reset attributes, which is a very easy way to just bring everything back to normal, to how it should be. So there you go, this is just normal text. 
Now, of course, I have a lot of styles and I recommend looking at the documentation, but you have a black, red, green, yellow, blue, magenta, cyan, white, and just default. And of course, you can just add BG and then the colors as BG default, BG white, or FG red. You can just add those there. Uh, for text styles, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I will mention a couple of them. You have style bright, style dim, style underscore, style blink, style reverse, style hidden, and style strike through, and style italic. Note that style italic will appear reversed if the terminal does not support it. So if I go style italic, and we go like this. My terminal does support italic text, so it will just look normal. But it will be reversed and not italic if your terminal does not support it. So just keep that as note. All right. You can also go std out dot right. So this is just like echo. Hello world. Just as a little recap from the start. And there we go std out dot erase line and this will erase the current line so the above line won't be displayed in your terminal this is pretty cool because that means you can add text and then later remove that text so if i were to go here and run it you'll notice it's no longer there because the line was erased that's a very cool feature that you can do using std out and the terminal package Let's say we echo out some uh, some thing cool and echo out text. Then here we can say std dot cursor up, and this will move the cursor up, and we can say two to specify two lines. And now if we were to echo out, I am new, and we were to run this, and it should be std out, not just std. And now if I run this, we get I am new g cool. So without this, it will look something like this, something cool and text. But when I do this, it will move the cursor up, and it will add that there. We can, of course, make the cursor go down, and let's say with one. And you can move the cursor just how we like. So now we could go cursor forward with two. You can also move the cursor backwards if you want to. And let's go right std out hello world. Now I wanted to do this a little bit because sometimes we forget you don't have to do this. You could also do it like this. We sometimes forget about these cool name features. So I need to bring it back every once in a while just so we can get a little bit of a refresher. So in this case, you can still do this. This is still valid name code. It means the same thing. Now, if we were to run this, we get I am new G cool text and in hello world. The reason we get text now is because we move the cursor back down. Because when we move the cursor up, it didn't render because the cursor wasn't there anymore. It only renders where the cursor is. So in this case, it also moved a little bit forward because that's where we moved it to. And we also moved the cursor down. Now you could also go std out dot erase screen. And this will erase, but not clear everything in the terminal and return the cursor home. So if I run this, as you can see, it clears it, but it doesn't quite erase it. I'm going to remove that because that's pretty much annoying to work with, unless you have a specific reason for it. You can also go var s is equal to get ch, and this will halt the process until a character has been entered has been entered with the such, such as getting the user input and you can of course echo out s so now we run this and that's waiting for a character input so i can go l and there it actually echoed l but it didn't, it didn't look like it but it did actually echo l 
I could also go, and this would also work. So if I go boom, you'll see it also adds that. You also have hide cursor, and this will hide the cursor. So if I were to run that, you'll notice my cursor is now missing. But this actually lasts after the session, so it's always a good idea to later on just say show cursor, just so the person's cursor can be shown again. And there we go, my cursor is back. You can also std dot std out dot set cursor position, and then you can specify the x position. So let's say ten. And in the Y position, which is five. And then let's say echo, I, whoop, I am here. Now if you were to run this, you'll see it positioned it 10 downwards. So I think it's about 10 characters and five left. Or 10 left because X is from left to right and then five downwards because Y is from up to down. So let's say you're trying to get the user password. You can go std or var a, and we can just say read password from standard input. And we can tell them enter your password, echo a, so you can get the password back. So now here it's telling me to enter my password and I can type whatever I want. So So I enter my password, when I press enter, there you go. Now don't hack me please, now that you know my password. Let's say you need to get the terminal height, in which case you can just echo out. I'm just going to add a backslash in there. And let's get the terminal height. And this will get the, term the height of the terminal in rows. And you can also get the width in uh, columns. And if you want to get both, you can just say terminal size. So we're to run this. And these are of course functions, so I need to call them. So now if I run it, we'll get 3345 for the width and the height. And if I were to do this, the width will change. So if I run that, it's now 72 and 33. And these are just some of the cool things you can do with the STD or the terminal module in NIM. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next NIM tutorial.